Nothing But The Truth. Hello, I'm Raj Chengapa of India Today and your host for Nothing But The Truth. Every week, I will bring you insights and clarity on a major topical issue that matters to you without holding back on the truth. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is always trying to make the impossible possible. He has now set the seemingly impossible target for the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party or the BJP to win 370 seats by itself in the upcoming general elections and along with its allies in the National Democratic Alliance or the NDA, the BJP wants the overall tally to cross 400 plus. Now this is an electoral feat that has been achieved only once before, that to 40 years ago when uh, Rajiv Gandhi uh, powered the Congress party to a record 414 seats of the 543 seats in the Lok Sabha. So in this episode of Nothing But The Truth, we will analyze the BJP's ambitious game plan and uh, strategies to cross 400 seats, or as they say, char sau par. Essentially, we will assess whether, uh, whether this is Modi's mission impossible or he would weave his electoral magic and make it mission possible. To analyze these issues, I'm uh, very happy to welcome reputed political strategist and sophologist Amitabh Tiwari, who runs a popular blog, uh, blog site called Political Baba, very interesting. He has advised top political parties, including other, uh, including chief ministers, and uh, was a former investment banker. Uh, and thank you, Amitabh, for agreeing to share your insights, and so welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. It's an honor and pleasure to be on your show. Amitabh, let's start with the BJP's target or the NDA's target of 400 and why at first glance it seems like the electoral equivalent of uh, climbing Mount Everest. Now we know that uh, the BJP in, uh, 2000, in the 2019 election did outstandingly well by winning 303 seats on its own. That is almost 31 seats more than the simple majority of 272 seats of, uh, as I would mentioned earlier, the 543 seats of the Lok Sabha. And with its allies, the NDA's total was 353. So if you take the overall vote percentage, the BJP got around 38% votes, and the NDA, uh, 40, uh, with the NDA, got 45%. Well, again, this is an outstanding performance. Getting to, uh, to Mount 400 is going to be tough. Now, the BJP needs to add 70 seats, or, uh, and its NDA allies would have to uh, help them out uh, with keeping or retaining the 50-odd seats that they had won last time. Now, you have a plan which you call Prabhu Ram. <laughs> so let's start with this very curious acronym, which I gather really has nothing to do with Lord Ram, uh, uh, though the BJP will certainly need his blessings uh, to achieve that. So what does your Ram look like? Yeah, uh, any election in India uh, is not a done deal. Uh, this is largely because of three factors. The first is that a large number of people in India are late deciders. Is like 25 to 30 percent as per CSDS. Then there are 25 percent people who vote on the basis of the candidate. This is Access My India 2019 data. So the main consideration for them is the candidate. And the third and most important number is that in India only 31 percent people are loyal voters. Again, an Access My India and India Today 2019 exit poll data, which means that 69 percent of the people are not ideologically aligned or hardcore ideological voters of any party. So that's a big chunk of 69%, which swing between different parties in different elections, depending upon the environment. So no election in India is a done deal. So the election is still open, let's say, for that matter. Well, that's, still, <laughs> that's very good, really good to hear that, in the sense that you are saying 25% of the voters will decide in the next two months. So whatever else that has happened in the last four or five years, uh, the either party, whether it's the uh, BJP or its uh, opponents, uh, the Congress and others, can still gain ground or lose ground in the uh, in the next two months, depending on how they uh, they uh, move on their political strategies. Correct, correct. Because there's there's still a lot of time. Uh, there's still three weeks to six weeks for many seats to go to polls. So things can change. So, However, in any election, there are favorites, and BJP is the favorite. Uh, can favorites lose? Yes, they can lose. Can they always lose? I mean, that happens very rarely in, in games we've seen. Sorry. Yeah, but let's come to your RAM formula. Yeah. You know, what is the acronym, the expansion of that acronym, and 
let's get into the nuts and bolts of that yeah so ram essentially is composed of a three tier strategy uh, r means regain a means attain which means gain sort of and m means maintain so this is the three tier strategy for bjp in regain bjp uh, can i start let us let us start with maintain okay because i think yeah. that's very important i talked of the 303 seats uh, that uh, you know the bjp had won and also the fact that nda had 353 so uh, if you see the statistics that's there the nda pretty much swept the lok sabha seats in these uh, in 13 states if i recall haryana himachal pradesh uttarakhand rajasthan gujarat many of these states were getting 100% madhya pradesh uh, chatisgarh bihar jharkhand maharashtra delhi and uh, karnataka and up and the statistics show that in these 13 states the nda won 283 out of the 314 seats now that is a phenomenal strike rate of 90% uh, in these seats so what is the strategy uh, that the bjp and the nda now have to adopt to maintain these uh, this the strike rate they had or even improve on it yeah so maintain is the most important because if they do not win these 303 seats then it is difficult to uh, uh, achieve the 370 target in 224 of these 303 seats bjp got more than 50% vote share so right. that's a huge lead which they have if we break this 303 into two segments one is they mm -hmm. won 175 seats against the congress party Mm. and 128 seats against the regional parties okay in the 175 seats against the congress party they have a vote share lead of 20% plus wow that's a phenomenal lead which means congress needs a swing of 10% from the bjp right. towards itself to turn this around that's 175 seats you're saying 175 seats and the entire election actually is predicated on these 175 sort of seats if the congress party is not able to win a significant chunk of seats then bjp finishes near to the majority if and can you tell us where that uh, uh, 175 seats lie of the congress which states largely uh, does has yeah. the bjp captured yeah. yeah so these seats are essentially bipolar states largely gujarat mp chatisgarh uh, delhi haryana himachal Uh, Uttarakhand, some seats in Maharashtra, Bihar, UP as well, uh, some mm -hmm. seats in Telangana, Karnataka, for that matter. So these are the states. Unfortunately for the Congress Party, in 80% of these seats, the regional parties do not have any significant vote share. In fact, oh. the third ranked party in these 175, uh, and Congress had 115, so let's say 190 odd seats, is just 4%. so regional parties do not have any role in these 175 seats which the bjp won and that is perhaps the you can say the unlucky part for the congress uh, in terms of alliance is that while it is able to transfer vote share to regional parties whatever it has 2% 5% 7% 10% in states it does not get the same reciprocity from the regional parties and that is perhaps the crux of the problems in the india block so these are the 175 seats Correct. in this 175 seats also uh, on 153 seats bjp had more than 50% vote share hmm. this is a mammoth uh, uh, scale of victory which the bjp had in these seats so it needs to maintain if we talk about is there any state amongst these uh, 175 seats where congress looks in a better position to today defeat the bjp uh, i would say perhaps no state where the bjp can sorry where the congress can get more states seats than the bjp perhaps in karnataka in telangana in in mpcg it can pull a few back i'll come to those states but meanwhile you were saying one is the congress and 175 yeah. and the strike rate is dismal when it comes to the bjp the bjp uh, you know sweeps all these states that's there and congress needs to improve on that particular front even may not be it needs a massive vote swing for it you were also talking of the other uh, you know of the 303 there were 200 yeah. i mean 160 odd other seats that the bjp yeah. is there which their regional parties if i recall that you were mentioning now what yeah. is there in that particular thing where is the sort of advantage the bjp has or the challenges it faces yeah 
So essentially, BJP and regional parties contested on 185 seats in right. 2019, out of which BJP won uh, 128 and regional parties 57. Right. He, the vote share lead for the BJP is 7% in right. these seats, average vote share lead. And Sorry, can you just repeat what is the percentage you said? The vote average share? lead of the BJP in these right. 185 seats where BJP won 128 and the regional parties 57 is 7% vote share. Okay. And incidentally, the third ranked party, whichever it was in these 185 seats has an average vote share of 7%. So this is where the alliances kick in. This is where okay. the role of alliances is. So you are saying, the, may I just interpret that, you are saying that the difference between the BJP and the regional parties, wherever they're contesting the seats that you mentioned, is the difference is 7%, yes. right? Is the winning margin is 7% for winning the BJP or for the average. regional party? Is no. it what? No, on an on an whole for the BJP, on an whole okay. for the BJP, on an whole, if we take the average vote share of BJP in all these seats where it has won right. and lost both, and same for the regional parties. And on 88 of these seats, the Congress was the third party. Mm. And these are the states these are the states like UP, West Bengal, uh, you can say uh, Bihar. These right. are the states where these largely these seats are, Telangana right. also. And okay. here is where the Congress can play a role by aligning with parties. Right. Like okay. UP, but in West Bengal, they have uh, lost it out. There, there is no alliance. So here is where the role of regional parties and alliances kicks in. Large. So that is why we can now understand why the Congress seemed very reluctant to get into any alliance because it really doesn't help the Congress in, in the key areas or its key <laughs> zones that it is doing or one on one with BJP it doesn't really add uh, anything to it. And in the, on the other hand, they, Congress actually helps the other regional parties to get uh, gain the percentage they need to defeat the BJP wherever possible. That's the general trend yes. of your argument on That's this one. Correct. Yeah, that's the... Let's start with the, continuing with the maintain theme that you talked about, yeah. let's look at Uttar Pradesh. You know, it has 80 seats, which is the largest that any state has in the country. It's phenomenally large. And in 2019, the BJP won 62 seats and its ally two seats uh, more, so it got 64. So that meant 16 seats went to the opposition. What does it need to achieve a clean sweep? Because this is one place, 16 seats is a lot. <laughs> a, a state like Telangana has 17 seats uh, in all. And here are 16 seats if it's able to capture. What should the strategy of the BJP be to win the 16 seats that's there? Again, and maintain uh, the uh, 64, right? <laughs> they have to maintain it. Right? Again, yeah. as we see, Prabhu Ram pr perhaps is smiling on the BJP here. Because the <laughs> epicenter of the Ram Mandir inauguration or the movement is in UP. And incidentally, right. while we believe that BJP has maxed out in the Hindi heartland, but as you said rightly, there are 16 seats which can be gained by the BJP here. And that is the highest number of potential seats which BJP can gain in any state across India in this election. So it is right. the right place at the right time, sort of. So how it can win these 16 seats? Last time when right. it lost uh, uh, these seats, uh, I think uh, it lost almost 10 seats compared to 2009, uh, 2014. 10 of those were won by the Bahujan Samaj Party because there was a formidable alliance between the Samajwadi Party, Bahujan Samaj Party and the RLD, which catered to a larger section of population, which is MY, almost 30%, and the Dalit population. So 50% of population that alliance represented versus a 50% uh, 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 population or a voting segment of upper caste and non Yadav OBCs represented by the BJP. So that was a 50-50 fight. There also uh, was the SP aligned. Wasn't the SP aligned also with the BSP at that time? Yeah, the SP was. Samajwadi party was? Yeah, yeah, Samajwadi party. So they brought in the MY, the Muslim Yadav vote and the uh, BSP brought in the Dalit vote. So 50 versus 50%. Now, this time what has happened is that though there is, though Congress is added to this alliance, RLD has left and joined the BJP. So that's a double impact. That's largely right. going to impact the Western UP where Jats are in significant number, roughly 25% of the RLD is the Russia Lokdal, which is uh, headed Rashtra by Lok. Jain Chaudhary. Of, yes. of Jain Chaudhary. But right. the BSP is not part of this alliance. So what 
right. happens is that this alliance becomes inherently weaker because in terms of a social engineering it is largely then left to my plus a section of uh, upper caste voters which are still remain with the congress and a section of the non jata voters which the samajwadi party has been able to win back in 2022 with han sabha election but on the other side what has happened is that from the dalit category bjp has emerged as the number one party of the non jatas mm. which is almost 9% of the population so in terms of a social engineering it has upper caste plus non yadav obcs plus non jatas to it so it represents almost 60% of the population vis a vis 30% with uh, or, or rather 55 to 60% with bjp uh, and 12% left with mayawati because only jatavs are left and roughly 35% with the samajwadi party and, and they are... also if i'm not mistaken the bjp has tied up with uh, that uh, om prakash rajbar's uh, suhel dev bharatiya samaj party right the sbsp which represents a certain uh, section of the backward and dalit in the eastern up uh, region yes, yes. so Uh, BJP has also tied up with these smaller parties, so BJP has a has a stronger alliance compared to 2019, whereas the opposition has a weaker alliance compared to 2019. And the SBSPs and the Nishad parties of the world also have decent vote share, especially in the Purvanchal region, where BJP suffered the biggest losses in 2022 Vidhan Sabha elections. That was the. That is why you see. <laughs> that is why in some senses you see the rahul gandhi and priyanka gandhi <laughs> priyanka priyanka also not wanting to contest from up because they think in many senses the odds are stacked against them and the samajwadi party which is their ally may not be able to kind of provide the momentum for them to win their early erstwhile seats uh, rahul gandhi's erstwhile constituency yeah because the samajwadi party though has expanded its its vote bank the my tag still Uh, is 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 related to the party and it has it has not been able to make a significant dent in the non yadav obc vote bank of the right. bjp plus what happens is that in the 2022 vidhan sabha election the maximum loss of the bsp was absorbed by the samajwadi party however from here if the bsp loses further votes because it's largely left with dalit votes this could this could go to the bjp and not the samajwadi party so that's also complicates matters for the india bloc in in up and gives confidence to the bjp right so you you're saying the sp samajwadi party it did fairly well in the assembly elections but when it comes to a lok sabha poll it will not kind of get the kind of traction uh, you know akhilesh yadav will not get that kind of traction and as you are saying the my just to explain to our uh, uh you know those who are viewing and listening is the muslim yadav combination that he has which he continues to be very strong but that need is not sufficient enough to to uh, unseat the bjp or bring the numbers down that it has is yeah. that correct it's largely 32% of population and he has not been able to expand his vote base plus what happens in that in a national election the role of the prime ministerial candidate becomes fairly important and akhilesh yadav is not the prime ministerial candidate he is the chief ministerial right. candidate so akhilesh yadav whatever votes he got on the basis of his leadership qualities in a vidhan sabha election that may also go away from him and for the leadership factor the gandhis will need to draw the votes but they are not willing to uh, contest in the state so the leadership right. votes whatever segment of the lead, leadership vote the uh, samajwadi party alliance got may also switch to the uh, bjp led alliance because of a Uh, the national character of the elections now let's turn to another key battleground state that uh, the bjp has to retain and this is maharashtra which is the second largest in terms of seats 48 seats it offers in 2019 the bjp and the shiv sena uh, were in an alliance together and they won 41 seats of that uh, 48 seats and the break up being that the bjp won 23 seats and the shiv sena won 18 seats but after assembly elections the shiv sena broke away Uh, and joined the national congress party nationalist congress party and the congress party to form the maharashtra vikas agadi and uh, that really created problems for the bjp but it struck back first by breaking the shiv sena uh, by winning over eknath shinde and making him the cm with their support and then of course splitting the ncp the nationalist congress party and winning over ajit pawar last year so does this put the bjp in the driver's seat now in maharashtra 
it appeared two years ago that they were badly positioned, but now they seem to have recovered, or have they done an overreach? So they were in the in the back seat, and that's why the the, the Shiv Sena and the NCP alliance is fructified. So BJP realized that it's on a back foot, and uh, uh, it took remedial measures. One can say. However, the problem in Shiv Sena, or uh, however the problem in Maharashtra, is that who is the real Sena and who is the real NCP? is not known to many people, does not know. People don't know that because it has not been tested yet in any election, in any big election. Of course, there has been one or two bipoles, but they cannot be construed as uh, having the, the, the right example. So uh, whatever votes Shiv Shena has, Shiv Shena got some 23%. In a national election, even one fourth of the votes which the allies of BJP got was due to the Modi factor as per CSTS. Hmm. So which means one can easily remove 5 to 6% of that 23% portion. So they are left with 18% of their hardcore vote. Now, right. who has this 18%? Just does Shinde have it? Does mm -hmm. Thakare has it? Do they have it half-half? Is it one, one is to two? We don't know. We'll have to see. Similarly for NCP. NCP had 16% vote share roughly in mm -hmm. Lok Sabha and Congress also had 16. So that makes it 32% vote share. Out of this 32% vote share, almost 9% vote share is from the minority population. Because the uh, UPA at that point of time got 77% of Muslim support. And Muslims are around 10, 10 11%. Right. So now of this 9% vote, with Ajit Pawar aligning with the BJP, Will he get this 9% vote? It is highly doubtful. Mm. So this vote might remain with the UPA block. Now, where the Shiv Sena candidate contests from the India block side, does this Muslim voter who overwhelmingly 80% roughly voted for the uh, NCP and Congress candidates, will they vote for the Shiv Sena candidate with the same seal? So it's a lot of a khichdi, This And that's why it is very tricky for pollsters to determine who has the edge here? It could be seat by seat. However, it's again not a, a regional election. A lot of these could play out in a Vidhan Sabha election. In a mm -hmm. national election where 37% of the people are voting in the name of the Prime Minister as per Access My India study, who is the Prime Ministerial candidate of the India bloc is a question mark. So what happens is right. that the India bloc leaves a big chunk of their addressable market unsatisfied, they do not have answer or a leader to present to this 37% because a Sharad Pawar or a Uddhav Thakare cannot be the prime ministerial candidate. They may be chief ministerial candidates. So this is uh, where the Maharashtra scene gets fairly complicated if, if we assume that, because we don't know the numbers, if we assume that both the, both the factions have half-half support of the original support, uh, then BJP looks to have an edge on paper on the basis of 2019. I will just add one more point before we move to the next state, and that is the fact that uh, given the kind of machinations that the BJP did uh, to split the various parties, uh, in some senses, brand BJP, though it might have you know, got the driver's seat again, uh, its image could have been dented because they seem to be like any other party, though they claim to be a party of difference. Would that in some senses have, uh, be, you know, the Marathi pride or the Maratha pride, would that be impacted? Would they feel that, look, this has gone too far and therefore the BJP, you know, has overreached in trying to do what it's doing and therefore could lose a bit of that vote over there? A yeah, sympathy so, wave, if you'd like to call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For yeah, so the... this is there because the BJP has, uh, in the past, or even today is largely considered as a party which has the support of the Gujarati community and the North Indian community in, uh, uh, in Maharashtra. And added to on that was the Shiv Sena Marathi Manus support, as we call it. Uh, a very pertinent question raised, and that's not only uh, uh, relevant to the uh, Marathi Manus, as we call it, because right. uh, any election which BJP today is winning is not because of Hindutva. So the, the cherry on the cake, almost, or the 37, 38% vote share, as you mentioned, nationally, the BJP score vote is perhaps 25%. One third of this 37, 38 is the Modi factor. And that comprises of individuals who are not hardcore ideologically aligned to a party. 
those are neutral and this ed action arrest all these things do impact this set of voters who feel that the, this is the party is the same as not any other party and this mm-hmm. could have an effect how big or small it is very difficult to gauge at this stage okay i mean uh, the seat sharing arrangements are being worked out now i think they've almost finalized but we won't get into that detail till we actually get the actual seat, seat sharing and we can analyze that further but let's now get to the other big battleground state which is bihar uh, it has 40 seats and here again we see tremendous uh, political flip flops especially by nitish kumar um, just to recap uh, for those who have joined us in 2019 the bjp along with nda allies the janta dal united which was headed by uh, nitish kumar and the lok janshakti uh, janshakti party had swept bihar uh, in the lok sabha winning uh, 39 out of the 40 seats with more than 53% of the votes however two years later in august 2022 the party received its biggest setback when uh, 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 nitish kumar the bihar chief minister and the jdu stalwart walked out of the party's alliance with the bjp and formed a government along with the rashtriya janata dal the rjd chief uh, tejasvi yadav nearly a year down the line nitish also became if you recall the fulcrum of the 27 party uh, opposition alliance that was uh, imaginatively christian the india or the indian national development and inclusive uh, alliance nitish also made good on his uh, promise if uh, to conduct a caste census in the state he increased reservations on the basis of that exercise handing the opposition the full plank of a national uh, sen- uh, you know census or caste census to counter the bjp's hindutva push so amitabh here's where we now reach there's been a stunning coup uh, just in january 2024 the bjp got nitish to dump the rjd and rejoin the nda now the bjp seems to be on the driver seat again having not uh, got not just the janata dal united but also the breakaway faction of the ljp headed by chirag paswan to return to the nda so do you think two things one did in this sense is now Uh, sound the death knell for of uh, india as we knew it and to the impact of this on bihar does this give now uh, bjp complete assurance uh, in a state that almost seemed to have gone getting it right back as they did in maharashtra yes yeah, so essentially bjp was here on the back foot and nitish kumar was the uh, deciding factor it said that wherever nitish kumar moves that alliance uh, largely wins the wins any election whether it is state election or a national election so since nitish's party had won 16 seats there was a, a risk of losing majority of them if nitish was on that side because nitish uh, kumar's jdu and rjd also have had a successful history of a vote transfer between themselves in 2015 being part of the uh, janata party or janata dal uh, background so but now with uh, nitish kumar switching back to uh, uh, nda what happens is that it again weakens the alliance which india block has there which is which largely comprises of uh, lalu prasad is party rjd congress and some left parties uh, but there since the nda had got 39 out of 40 it is difficult to achieve that number it's not going to be easy of course there is a national character of the elections but nitish kumar's popularity uh, may have dented somewhat because of this frequent uh, flip flops so what could happen is that on the 16 seats which uh, nitish kumar is contesting those could be the weak seats for the nda uh, uh, alliance similarly the eight or nine seats which the congress party will be contesting from the india block could be the weak seats uh, for the uh, india block here as well and bjp would 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 uh, feel confident of winning on uh, on the on those eight seats tejasvi is fairly popular among the youth with unemployment being a big factor in this uh, lok sabha election and he has uh, created a lot of government vacancies when while he was in office and unlike akhilesh he has been able to expand its his his vote bank as well so his vote bank today again which was largely my sort of uh, in the last vidhan sabha elections or uh, he uh, the rjd has gained 10% support of mm. non yadav mcs so that's a huge number where in the population itself is 25 to 30% so he could give a tough fight whether it will be 39 uh, uh, one or it will be 30 10 that's very difficult to to decide because again the complexity of the alliance a seamless vote transfer what happens is that while rjd and other parties 
will be able to transfer their votes to the Congress candidate. As we saw in 2020 election, the Congress strike rate was just 19 out of 70 seats. If they had won just eight seats more, then the Mahagadbandan would have formed the government. So Congress party is the weak link here. And Modi is fairly popular again because of a Hindi heartland state. And we'll have to see how the things pan out. But BJP does have an edge. It could lose a few seats, of course. Then. Now, just one additional question on Bihar. Given the fact that this is where the genesis of the national backward caste census sort of exploded at that time, in, with Nitish Kumar joining back, does this nationally also begin to impact the Congress's and the uh, India Alliance's huge demand for the backward classes to be, you know, in terms of reservations and everything, has that punctured that, uh, their, their initiative? Or is that movement still strong? Though in Bihar, the impact would be lessened since uh, Nitish Kumar switched back to the uh, NDA. Actually, in my opinion, this caste census pitch uh, has not been working for the Congress party. It, it did not work in the, in the heartland states where... Uh, uh, elections were held uh, last year in, in December. It's not right. as big an emotive issue like in 1990s. What did we see in 1990s? We saw significant violent protests on the street. When the right. caste census results were declared in Bihar, we did not see anything of that sort this time. Why? One, because the upper caste or has already got a 10% reservation under the EWS. That's number one. Number two, somehow BJP has positioned itself as the champion of the OBCs or the champion of the lower OBCs. So when uh, 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 Congress or any other party promises a higher reservation for the lower OBCs, the lower OBCs do have a question in mind that when they have not been able to get significant share in the existing reservation system, what is the guarantee that they will be able to get maximum representation when the reservation ceiling is, is hiked? So that's a question which the Congress party has not been able to answer. And it is said that you have to walk the talk. How, what percentage of the CWC today comprises of the OBC? What percentage of candidates which the Congress party is fielding are OBCs? So these are some of the questions which people also see because BJP claims to give a significantly higher share of the representation to the OBC uh, community and since the prime minister also hails from the community, this sort of vote bank is somehow now with the BJP. They have doubled their, their support amongst the OBCs from 22% in 2009 to 44% in 2019 election. And with 45 to 50% of population hailing from the OBCs, this is the significant chunk or this represents the significant chunk of increase in vote share of the BJP over the years. Okay, that's one card that has been highly degraded for the uh, for the opposition. They thought they'd play the OBC card, but the BJC, BJP seems to have other Trump cards to take over that. Let's now turn to my home state, Karnataka, which is another key maintained state in your calculations. Just to uh, recall, in 2019, the BJP won uh, 26, actually 25 on one independent, independent of the state's 28 uh, Lok Sabha seats. The independent joined them subsequently. Uh, but it went on to lose the assembly elections to the Congress uh, just a year ago. And now it is uh, trying hard to win back the two dominant communities, the Vokligas and the Lingayats. Uh, we have seen uh, the BJP tie up with Devagada's Janta Dal Secular to attract the Vokliga votes, while they've made uh, B.Y. Vijendra, son of former Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa, the, the state president, to win back the Lingayat vote because Mr. Yadurappa was known to be one of the stalwarts of the Lingayats. So uh, if you look at this particular state now, given the fact that the Congress is ruling, it has two strong leaders there, do you think in some senses, instead of losing, uh, I mean, instead of winning 26 uh, out of 28, that numbers could come down? There is a threat for the BJP in Karnataka. Yeah, essentially, Karnataka is a state where uh, the BJP uh, sees uh, some or could see some losses. And there are many reasons for it. Though Karnataka is a state or rather the only southern state where the BJP is fairly strong. It has won maximum seats in all the elections since 2004 Lok Sabha elections. Uh, however, the party has, has largely also grown at the expense of leaders who have onboarded the party from the Janata Dal or the Congress. 
So we have seen that there has been a lot of backlash after the ticket distribution. It has dropped half of its sitting MPs, and eight of them were two term MPs. Now they have formed an alliance with the JDS, but JDS today is no longer the number one party of the Vokaligas with D K Shiv Kumar, right. the Congress party. Uh, uh, the Congress also has weaned away a significant chunk of Vokaliga votes. Now what happens is that BJP elsewhere in the country has largely banked on the lower OBC support. So a non-Yadav OBC versus uh, Yadav politics or a non-Jata, non-Jat versus Jat politics. Here, they have not been able to crack the lower OBC vote, which is largely with the Congress. The Ahinda, as we call the OBC, right. uh, Urubas, lower OBCs, SCSTs, and minorities. And Siddharamaya is the one that championed this whole Ahinda concept. Ahinda yes. concept. Uh, that entire consolidation of Ahinda. Here, it is seen as playing the dominant OBC politics because of Lingayas. And now by joining hands with JDS, it again solidifies this thing that they are playing dominant OBC politics here, Lingayas plus Vokalik. So this automatically consolidates the larger section of Ahinda voters. And to give credit to Congress or the Siddharamaya government, they have been able to implement these schemes on the ground. When you walk there in the rural areas, most of the people eligible have got some or the other schemes. They have also uh, allotted or allocated 50,000 crores for these schemes. So there is a good traction of the schemes amongst women, of course, because they are getting 2,000 rupees and a free bus travel, and also among this Ahinda section of voters, because it is largely applicable to poor voters. And they have also been able to seed the narrative that if BJP wins in the center, right. then there could be an Operation Lotus and the government could be overturned and they could be deprived of these uh, benefits. So it's a beneficiary versus a beneficiary battle in Karnataka. A state okay. government beneficiary battle versus a central government beneficiary battle. What works for the BJP or negates or neutralizes these risk factors is the fact that Prime Minister Modi is very popular in the state. In, at an all India level in 2019, one out of every three voter voted for BJP because of Prime Minister Modi, CSDS data. But in Karnataka, that number is 53%, which means one wow. out of. And surprisingly, the Ram Mandir there does have an impact because mm. Prabhu Ram spent a lot of time of his exile, five out of, I think, 14 years in that state. It has historical references, Hanuman's birthplace. Is had. So there is a level of religiosity in the state, which perhaps is not as vocal as in the north, but this factor could play a role, at least amongst the senior citizens, because it said that as you as you grow older, you you tend to be become more religious. So the party hopes that these two factors could negate uh, some of the losses and the JDS is able to wean away or bring back a section of the Vokaliga voters. But it's a very tough contest or a battle if they have like this. Now, one of the things that I want to bring, since you mentioned uh, the Congress guarantees, the five guarantees, in fact, they started the whole guarantee thing and swept the state at that time. Take a look at what it has done nationally. The Congress has now come out with 25 uh, such guarantees. And among them, just to mention one of them was that it said that uh, they would give as much as one lakh rupees annually to uh, the, uh, every poor woman that's there in the country, the, the woman head of that uh, particular family. And uh, also, uh, you know, they promise on the farmer's side to legalize uh, uh, the MSP, minimum support prices, in, for key crops. Now, uh, Mr. Modi had gone on the plank of saying, okay, uh, I'm not going to play the caste plank, but I've got uh, four jatis, which is youth, uh, you know, women, poverty, and farmers. Now, Congress is attacking all these four sort of constituents. How much do you think the welfare game or the guarantee, and Modi says, I, there's Modi guarantee as well, I'll make it a developed country. This uh, guarantee battle that you see in Karnataka, how will it play out nationally? Do you think this will have an impact in terms of the numbers, not just in the maintained states, but of the other states, which will come to, of course, the attain and the... Uh, regain states. But let us just uh, deal with this for about a couple of minutes. How much impact will these have, you think? So I think the, the problem with the Congress party has been over the years that it has not been able to develop any state as a model state or any mm -hmm. state as a 
let's say a model of its guarantees model karnataka is just one year old and they are implementing but it has not reached a scale which can be tom tom nationally because they have been in power just for nine months there are some glitches still in the implementation of the schemes and the same promises are not being given at the national level so what that is another problem with the com in all the states you have different guarantees so it's not a common messaging which is going out in karnataka you were giving 2000 per month that means 24000 rupees in uh, rajasthan something else was promised nationally you are promising 1 lakh there is no consistency of messaging whereas in bjp's case the messaging is consistent largely in terms of modi ki guarantees uh because of decent amount of implementation this will have an impact on karnataka but may not have an impact nationally because congress itself is not using this 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 model which is that it has implemented in 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 karnataka to showcase to the voters that see this is what we are promising it's just not a promise we have implemented this in karnataka to a certain level to a good level and this is the model we we want to bring to the national level that is the gap in the messaging it is it is not itself showcasing the karnataka model to the national level so how will voters believe in the communication because many people would not even be knowing on on a uh, pan india level so that's the the, the problem or the missing but link but one could also argue amitabh that uh, after all it was the congress that started the narega and actually delivered a lot and won the first election i mean in 2009 after it had 2004 captured power it actually one of the things that propelled it for a second term was the narega program and its anti poverty programs i mean sir we've got uh, another 10 12 minutes to go so now let's look we've dealt in detail on the maintained states now let's look at the attained states that you'd call i mean we'll come to uh, regain uh, but let's get to attained states where is the real difficulty for them is it the coromandel coastline where your west bengal uh, odisha telangana and tamil nadu where the would you call these the attained states or where would you say would be the real challenge for them so see largely the attained states are uh, bjp was runner up in 72 seats in 2019 right. of these 17 seats were lost by a margin of 5% mm-hmm. so these are the attained seats for the bjp these are largely in as you said in uh, west bengal odisha even up because they lost quite a few right. uh, seats there so these are the big states where the these 72 uh, seats are there if right. there is swing of 5% in favor of the bjp because of all these factors if right it's a big numerically theoretically mm-hmm. and it is able to draw this 5% from the winner then the party could win 39 of these 72 seats so if there is a swing of 10% minus mm-hmm. 5 from the winner and plus 5 to the bjp it can win 39 seats largely again in up 12 in bengal 8 in uh, uh, odisha and 6 in 8 in up and 6 in odisha so 26 of this line could come from only these three states let us drill down on west bengal because that's you know significantly in terms of number of seats that it has and last time the bjp won 18 of those seats if i recall and of course uh, the tmc uh, trinamool congress uh, conceded a lot of ground to the bjp but came storming back in the uh, you know uh, assembly elections that were there and the uh, mamta banerjee the chief minister uh, outstanding where of course they won 22 seats uh, in the lok sabha but when it came to the assembly elections in 21 they i think won a massive amount 215 out of 292 seats with a 48% vote share leaving the bjp with only around 77 seats and 37% of the votes whereas in the parliament election the bjp had got a lot more vote percentage can the bjp really regain the ground there is uh, is mamta banerjee more vulnerable now than she was in 2021 where she was really massively you know popular and everything else as we saw in the assembly will the lok sabha elections make a difference would this be uh, in some senses the fall of mamta at the lok sabha or will she be able to hold that's the big question Yes, see, essentially, uh, Mamata Banerjee's party was also helped by a systematic transfer of votes from the CPM and the Congress side in uh, 2021 Vidhan Sabha election. That's why this three-fourth majority was achieved. Now, if Mamata had allied with the Congress party there, mm-hmm. then 
the bjp could have lost few seats because the congress party's vote share is largely comprises of minorities and uh, sc st mm-hmm. votes this could have been transferred to tmc easily because they were earlier i mean tmc is a breakaway faction of the congress mm-hmm. this could have impacted bjp in six seats but now with this alliance not happening and this mm-hmm. anti let's see a natural anti incumbency against mamata because she has also been in power so she has to be also uh, accountable and responsible for a lot of things which are not going right in the state what happens mm-hmm. there is that the minority population there is 30% double the national average mm-hmm. now the congress and the cpm even if they are able to get 10% support of the minorities that's a 3% vote share but a 6% swing from the tmc towards the congress and the cpm and the difference between the bjp and the tmc is just a 3% vote share in the lok sabha that is yes in, in yeah. the lok sabha in the lok sabha yeah 3 4% vote share right now the tmc hopes that this caa issue could mm-hmm. consolidate the minority vote in favor of the party and thus neutralize right. this congress and the cpm contesting together however there are 68% voters in uh, west bengal perhaps the highest in any state which are not loyal to any party they do not identify with any party mm. and uh, this number could could largely swing the election in any state uh, an insider versus outsider uh, campaign was played by mamata in 2021 but by now giving tickets to three outsiders that has also been neutralized uh, to right. uh, some extent there and west bengal has never seen a caste based politics it's largely a socio economic class politics but by the common uh, uh, usage of obc sc st which people had never heard of in in in, in there uh, bjp has also somehow managed to convert a bit of this class election into a caste based election and that's how they have been able and caste religion based election and that's how they have been able to hold on to a ground there and we'll have to see how this this is this is going to be as uh, yashwan ji says the mother of all 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 battles in this state <laughs> yeah would sandesh kali make a difference uh, with a dent the women voters or is just episodical and you know in the overall scheme of things will be limited to a few seats over there it depends upon how the BG, whether the bjp is able to uh, get this uh, through to the women voters 44% women voters versus i think 40% or 42% males voted for the tmc so the tmc has a solid women block uh, vote block but it remains to be seen whether the bjp is able to take this message to the larger west bengal apart from sandesh khali because uh, uh, in the urban pockets and by giving uh, a decent amount of tickets to the women candidates uh, mamata banerjee does have have an emotional bond with the women this would have uh, dented some of her popularity but again it it remains to be seen whether this becomes a deciding factor in the elections or not now quickly just andhra pradesh uh, you know the bjp has tied up with the tdp again the telugu desam party of chandra babu naidu and you have got the actor pawan kalyan's jan uh, janasena that is joined will this in some senses give them the advantage to not only win the lok sabha with much more seats i think last time the tdp got four out of the 25 uh, and give the bjp that as well as uh, uh, probably capture the state is there a lot of in- anti incumbency against uh, chief minister jagan reddy and in the ysrcp actually since it is a simultaneous election whichever party does well in the vidhan sabha is likely to do well in the lok sabha elections hmm. because if the person when he goes to the booth has to press two buttons to select right. an mla and an mp and psychologically normally people select the same two buttons right bjp is largely piggybacking on uh, tdp and and janasena's support because the party does not have significant presence there now it 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 remains to be seen whether tdp is is that a force uh, uh, um, again whether tdp remains a big force whether the 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 kammas and the kapus just because the, the janasena and the tdp have formed an alliance come together to take on the reddies and people also forget that uh, jagan mohan reddy has created his own significant beneficiary what we are talking about the cash dose there are significant schemes for obc sc st women and minorities uh, where cash dose have been given so he is a fairly 
popular leader not a not a leader uh, to 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 be defeated easily but what is happening is that the the better the congress does the worse the uh, the the, the ysrcp could do because in 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 many surveys including the motn so congress is 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 spoiling the game of ysrcp there because last time they had got 1% vote share but the motn shows that they are getting 6% so they are denting the minority and the scst vote bank of ysrcp and 5% is a huge swing so if they uh, uh, perform fairly well then ysrcp could face some trouble however it's a win win situation for the bjp because it is largely piggy backing on tdp even if even if they're not able to win and win just a couple of seats or a few seats that adds to the nda kitty and if ysr cp wins then anyways we've seen that jagan mohan reddy has been backing the bjp in the passage of important bills in the rajya sabha let's i know we've got very little time let's do the last bit with regain quickly if you can say what is your strategy you, we've done maintain it attain now the r in the ram where does that uh, come in which are the states that you're looking at when you say that yeah so bjp uh, lost 35 seats in 2019 which it had won in 2014 and 20 of these seats are in up and bihar itself nine of these seats were lost or rather given to allies because of reallocation of of or adjustments uh, seat adjustments here and there they had to give five seats to jdu because they had uh, formed an alliance with jdu so out of even if we adjust these nine seats there are 26 seats which the bjp needs to regain which it had won in 14 and lost in 19 to complete this this ram uh, strategy which is regain attain and maintain and uh, since this some of these seats are in the hindi heartland there is a probability that the party could be able to uh, win back these seats so if we add all the seats with uh, r a and m so m being maintained which is 303 uh m being maintained also of the allies allies currently are at uh, 49 sort of even if they have a two third strike rate then they become some 33 so 303 plus 33 is 336 if it regains this 26 seats then it becomes sort of 362 and if it wins the seats where it was runner up in the last elections then it somehow reaches the 400 number because in in attain we've missed that attain also is addition of allies and attain is also where the bjp is likely to contest a higher number of seats in 2024 vis a vis 2019 largely in in punjab tamil nadu and some in maharashtra where it could gain a few seats so in a best case as we used to call in our investment banking days in a best case scenario it can touch the uh, 400 mark however it is fairly improbable and impossible as you said but in politics impossible is possible in politics so we never know with the momentum uh, going in its favor uh, will it be able to get those uh, 50 extra seats because it is sitting at 352 Uh, currently with the uh, return of uh, jdu and the addition of uh, jds and uh, a tdp however the three factors which we discussed also shows that any election is not a done deal and the most important factor which you mentioned is whether this ed raids and uh, these arrests of leaders uh, does have a, uh, whether it can have a negative impact on the neutral non hardcore ideological voter base of the bjp and if they are not enthused to turn out in larger numbers then it could spoil the game plan and it also the last thing is it also depends this entire election whether bjp can get even to the simple majority or not depends on on the ability of the congress party to defeat bjp in the direct 190 or 200 odd seats if it gets 50 of these seats then bjp automatically falls to 270 levels so that's the equation of this lok sabha election and final question since you are an investment banker was an investment banker who would you invest in who would you bank on at the moment that's a very difficult question to answer <laughs> of course the the momentum largely uh, remains with the bjp and as we are discussing we are largely di- discussing whether we are going to get 370 or 400 and the real discussion whether they can even get 270 or not is not really happening which clearly shows that which way the winds are uh, blowing however the indian voting the psyche and the philosophy of the voter is fairly complex nowadays 
most of the election analysis is largely post mortem analysis and we can never say with surety what's going to happen that's very good advice it's not a done deal and as you started the whole uh, discussion today that almost 15 to 25 percent of the people make up their mind only at the last mile of the elections another 25 percent are not loyal to the parties they look at candidates all this will start acting up uh, as we get to the you know the real heat of the elections but Amitabh Tiwari thank you so much for your insights on this uh, uh, this session thank you very much for this and uh, uh, for those who would like to read more uh, on this subject do look at the latest India Today magazine that is going to analyze or, or will analyze the entire BJP game plan, the strategy that it has, and also has Amitabh Tiwari's analysis and very interesting charts apart from other sophologists. That's an issue to pick up. But thank you for listening to this episode of Nothing But The Truth. I look forward to having you with me next week. Nothing But The Truth.